Hello and welcome to Mile High Reapers. I'm Scott Anderson and I'm having to battle Ick again. Now if you remember my 90 gallon tank, I did a video on eliminating Ick in your reef tank and the way I did it was I removed all of my fish from my 90 gallon tank and left it fishless for almost three months. And that really did take care of all the Ick. The problem is with this 210, there's no way I'm able to tear it every piece of rock out of there to catch every fish. I tried many options, but in the end, I have to figure out how to beat the egg with the fish still in the tank. So here's what I did, and here's what the results are. The tangs have ick, and it's fairly bad. It's not to the point where I'm fearing for their lives, but it's enough that I need to fix this problem. So. First thing I'm going to do is just try to treat the tangs and see how that goes. Um, this morning I got up and Rinkins was scratching himself on the brain coral. And I looked at him and he looks pretty bad. He's not going to die or anything, but I need to get this problem treated. So this morning I was able to catch Rinkins when I went to feed the guy. He came up right to the top and he's a really aggressive feeder so while he was on top I just grabbed him with a net and that worked pretty well. So he's down here in the quarantine tank where I'm gonna treat him and I'm gonna be dosing copper to treat him. But I still need to get the other two tangs out. I don't like the idea of putting both tangs in there but that's what I gotta do. So I went to the fish crew in Fort Collins and I bought an Aquamedic fish trap. You can see I just kind of got it tied up on top. And hopefully that is going to catch the fish. I'm hoping I can get both of those zebra mosas in there, or sorry, zebra somas in there. So I'm gonna try that and I'll report back. So I'm gonna be treating the ick with a product called cupramine by Seachem. And this is a copper-based medication, so it can't be used in the display with all the corals as it would kill all the inverts. And that's kind of the point behind it, is it will kill the ick because it's an invertebrate, and the invertebrates are very sensitive to the copper. The fish are also sensitive to the copper as well. And the LFS said that this product was less aggressive than some of the other stuff, but still very effective. So it's not gonna mess with the fish as much, but it's gonna get rid of the ick. Now, LA Fish Guy says that you should dose in half dose increments. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think that's a guy's advice. It's well worth taking. So this bottle says that I'm supposed to dose 16 drops for every 10 gallons, and I've got 29 there, so it's gonna be roughly 48 drops that I need to put in there. So today, I'm gonna to go ahead and dose 24 drops, and then I'll do 24 more drops tomorrow, so that the initial jolt of the copper is less jarring the fish. He's kinda of got time to get used to it. It's been about a week now that I've been trying to catch the tangs and just no luck. The blue tang was really easy. I just tried to scoop him right out of the water and I got him really second try. Um, these guys, no luck. Got the fish trap. I've tried that. I try it every night when it's normal feeding time. Hasn't worked. I've tried not feeding them for a day or two. Doesn't work. I've tried putting food at the top of the water and having them swim up and catch it that way. Doesn't work. My wife's tried putting the net in to get them used to it and then scooping them up at feeding time. Doesn't work. So these guys are way smarter than I am. And it's not the trap's fault, but you can see how much algae's grown on the trap. That's how long I've been trying to catch these guys. It's been ridiculous. But I really need to get them out. But I can catch almost everything else in this tank with that trap except the tangs and who knows why i've put the mirror in there hoping that the tangs would see another tang and try to fight him no doesn't work so i'm at my wits end i'm gonna keep fishing hopefully i'll catch him after 
several weeks of trying, I have completely failed to catch the two Zebra Soma tanks. Um, there is no ick showing on them now. Um, in fact, there hasn't been ick on them in a couple of weeks now. And meanwhile, Rankin's the blue tank has finished his treatment in the copper solution and has was really stressing out in that little quarantine tank. It just was too small for him. So what I decided to do was to gamble a little bit and put Rinkins, the blue tang, back in the main display. There's still the chance that the it could reoccur, but at this point, he looks really healthy. His skin is back to the coloration it should be. All of the spots and lesions that were on his body from the ick are completely healed. So I'm gonna gamble, I've put him back in, and I've got a cleaner ass in there now, so we are going to monitor them and see how they do. It's been about two weeks now that I've had all three tangs back in the tank, and there are no signs of ick at this point. And one of the big reasons I think that this is happening is I've purchased a little cleaner ras, and I know a cleaner ras isn't going to make the full difference on whether or not you have ick in your tank, but I think it's actually really helpful in that the cleaner ras can literally pull parasites off of a fish. Now, I've heard it said many times that it is just not okay to keep a cleaner ras in your tank because they just don't do well in reef tanks. And to some extent that's probably true, but the cleaner ras that I purchased was eating frozen foods at the LFS and in my tank he's eating frozen foods. One of the things that I've noticed with the cleaner ras that I think makes a big difference is they really can only eat small particles of food. So what I've been feeding to my cleaner ras is the LRS um, frozen food product and basically it's just a blend of clams and shrimp and fish and all kinds of different stuff. And I basically put that in a bowl and break it up into little pieces and basically it gives lots of different food products to the tank and lots of different sizes. And I find that a lot of the fish are able to find something in that product they like. I'll watch the cleaner wrasse, he'll pick it at something, spit it out, pick it something else, spit it out, find a little piece of something and eat it. So he's able to kind of go through and pick it what he likes and spit out what he doesn't like. The stuff that he spits out is eaten by other fish in the tank. And I'm also noticing the same behavior with my bangies. The bangies are pretty picky eaters and will only eat certain things. And they're doing the same thing with the LRS. They're kind of taking little test bites at food, spitting out what they don't like, eating what they like. And I think that's actually a really good food to feed your fish. That way they kind of get the foods they like, they get good nutrition out of the deal. And it seems like so far at least for the cleaner ass that he's going to be able to live in my tank long term because he's got a food source that works for him. Now, as I said before, a cleaner ras will not eliminate ick from your tank, but what I think it does is it kind of completes that second half of the ecosystem. In nature, these fish would have cleaner shrimp, cleaner wrasse, gobies, all kinds of stuff that would literally pick the parasites off of them. And in most home aquariums, they don't have that. So when I added my cleaner wrasse to this tank, I had what I can only describe as the happiest blue tang in the world. Rankins, as soon as he saw that cleaner wrasse, frilled out his fins and started shaking like, come on, please, please, please clean me. It was like something he hadn't seen in two or three years that he had just missed so much. I mean, it was definitely a sign of memory and recognition within fish because as soon as he saw that fish, he knew exactly what it did. And all of the tangs love to be clean. The smaller fish I'm noticing don't seem to care about it so much. So, so far, two weeks into having all three tangs in the tank, I have no ick issues. And 
to be clear, I started fighting this problem as soon as I saw the slightest amount of ick issue. Although Rankins quickly developed the worst I'd ever seen, and when he went into his copper solution quarantine tank, he stressed out because it was a small tank, but it was able to eliminate all of those parasites that were bugging him, and he was able to fully recover. The yellow and purple tang seemed like once that extra stressor went away, their ick went away, and they've got no issues. I have no other issues with ick in the tank. Um, unfortunately, with this video, I can't offer a lot of advice on how to battle ick other than pulling all of your fish out of your tank because I will guarantee with 100% certainty that there is still a small amount of ick in my tank. Odds are I'm going to be living with it long term. But I'm kind of hoping that with the cleaner wrasse and the fish health going back up and no aggression issues between the tangs now, that the stress levels are low and that everybody can kind of coexist without having any major ick reoccurrences like it's been for the last two years of running this tank. Or, sorry, this tank and the 90 gallon tank and these fish. But, anyways, thought I'd show this video. It's a interesting story on how I battled ick. Unfortunately, it's not as beneficial to some people trying to battle ick, but this actually did work for me. So, thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers, and I'll see you on the next one. If you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button. And I'm still trying to continually post pictures and stuff on Facebook, so if you're interested, follow me there. Thanks for watching.